In chess, visualizing your next five moves can mean the difference between victory and defeat. In business, planning your next five moves will be the difference between you leading a market or letting the competition pass you by. In this video, you'll discover five critical moves from the book, Your Next Five Moves, that will position you five steps ahead of your rivals and be like a chess grandmaster, creating a path to victory. Move number one, know thyself. There are three things extremely hard, steel, a diamond, and to know oneself. Benjamin Franklin. At the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are, and you know what you want. Lao Tzu. If you take the time to understand what drives you and what you truly want, you will tap into an inexhaustible source of energy that will power you through challenges and allow you to play the game of business long enough to experience success. Therefore, get to know yourself on a deeper level by going to a quiet place and thinking of answers to the following questions until you emerge with a new level of self-knowledge. Question number one, what accomplishment am I most proud of and why? Maybe it's earning a master's degree while managing a full-time job and family commitments, or mentoring a colleague and seeing them grow into a confident, successful professional, or committing to a daily reading habit that helps you finish 30 books in a year. Once you've identified a few things you're proud of, look for a common theme. It could be facing a fear, taking on more responsibility than you thought you could handle, bouncing back from a failure, or achieving success with a team. Use your insights to set new goals that align with your most common theme. Question number two, who must I become to stop envying others? Comparing ourselves to friends, colleagues, and people online who are achieving more is a massive distraction. It's possible to craft a vision for yourself that's so compelling, so uniquely suited to who you are and what you want, that you effectively put the blinders on and stop comparing yourself to other people. As author Patrick Bet David puts it, if you feel envy, it's a sign you're either lying to yourself about what you truly want, or you lack the discipline to achieve it. In the book, Your Next Five Moves, Patrick Bet David writes about his friend Sean, who is a chronic quitter. Sean went from job to job because he constantly compared himself to ambitious entrepreneurs who were making millions and felt he was never able to catch up with them. But then Bet David asked him a simple but profound question. What kind of life do you really want? After some soul searching, Sean realized that he didn't actually want the fast paced life of an entrepreneur. What he truly wanted was to be a respectable salesperson in his company, earning $150,000 a year and being at home with his family each evening and coaching his son's little league baseball team. By getting clear on a vision for his life that he actually wanted, he could let go of false comparisons and find true happiness. Take a moment to ask yourself, who do I really want to be and what do I want my life to look like? Do you want to be a top salesperson, a solo entrepreneur, a key player on a high-performing team, or a renowned CEO like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, or maybe something else entirely different? What skills do you want to master? Who do you want to spend most of your time with, both personally and professionally? And what do you want a typical day to look like? Once you've crafted your vision, you need to test it by imagining challenges and checking for envy. First, how much discomfort and sacrifice are you willing to endure to bring your vision to life? And two, if you pursue your vision fully, will you stop envying other people? Move number two, embrace problems. In business, your job is simple, solve problems. The faster and more effectively you can do this, the greater your advantage. The best problem solvers handle crises quickly and prevent them from reoccurring. Here's a three-step approach that the best problem solvers take. First, they reframe the problem. They view problems as interesting algebra equations and break them down to solve for X. By shifting from feeling inconvenienced to being curious, they bring more energy and creativity to every problem. Step number two, they own the problem. They take responsibility for a problem and let the sting of that ownership set in for a few seconds. Then they use that as motivation to take action and prevent it from ever happening again. This mindset skips the denial and blaming stages and allows them to fix issues faster. And step number three, they dig deeper to identify root causes and prevent repeat problems. 
Great problem solvers have a habit of asking, what's the real issue here? After losing a major client, Bet David started digging to find the real issue. In the book, he writes, we lost our top customer. Why? A competing product costs less. Why? Because it has fewer features. Why? Because most customers don't need all the features in our product. Aha, that's the real issue. Once you pinpoint the core issue, generate three potential solutions, and then pick the one that has the best return on your time and resources. Then before you move on to the next problem, establish a new protocol to prevent that problem from resurfacing. This might be a new personal habit, a team agreement, or a new company-wide system. Move number three, assemble a winning team. No matter how brilliant you are, you can't win alone. As Reed Hoffman says, if you're playing a solo game, you'll always lose out to a team. Start building a winning team by codifying and trusting. Document everything you do. Write out procedures, record yourself performing tasks, and create detailed checklists. Your goal is to have a set of resources so comprehensive that if you had to step away for six months, someone could step in and run the business using those materials. Always remember the words of Bet David. The less your business depends on you, the more valuable it is. Now, once you've codified your business knowledge, focus on hiring people you can trust to execute and improve upon that code. Integrity must be your top priority. That means hiring people who are honest and reliable and who genuinely honor their word. Don't be swayed by charm or polished resumes and assign test projects to gauge people's dependability. When you completely trust your team to get things done and they trust one another, work flows faster because you don't need constant oversight. Trust equals speed and speed equals momentum. Move number four, scale through people. There are many ways to scale a business, but the most reliable way is by scaling your people. Wake up each day and ask, how can I help my people grow? Encourage your people to set ambitious personal and professional goals and then hold them accountable to those goals. As your people push themselves, they will push the company upward. In other words, as they scale their abilities, your company will scale. One of the best ways to help your people grow is to encourage them to be entrepreneurs inside your company. For example, let your sales manager create and execute a new sales strategy and run her team as she sees fit. When possible, offer your intrapreneurs equity in the company so they have skin in the game and are deeply invested in your company's long-term success. And move number five, take the opening. If you look closely, you'll spot a competitor getting complacent and not serving customers in the way they should. In 2009, Patrick Bet David noticed insurance companies in a state were doing a poor job using social media and serving minority groups like Latino women. So he hired hardworking Latino women, trained them to sell effectively, and then blitzed his old school competitors by using cutting edge social media advertising. In chess, great players constantly zoom out and scan the board for opportunities, like attacking an undefended piece or checking the king and forcing an opponent to move. Do something similar in business. Look for openings that your competition creates through complacency and step in that opening to serve their customers better. In the end, start making the following five moves to gain the upper hand in business. One, know what drives you and who you want to be. Two, embrace problems. Three, assemble a winning team. Four, scale your people to scale your business. And five, take the openings that your competitors create. That was the core message that I gathered from your next five moves by Patrick Bet David. This was an inspiring yet tactical business book. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribe to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.